I locked myself in the bedroom with my stereo, old Heath kit that I'd built when I was 14. And for the next three years, basically just listened to music, didn't do homework, didn't pay attention in classes, graduated at the bottom of my class, and my dad had the temerity to ask me, so, how is it you think you're going to make a living listening to records? Fifth grade, and we were playing Rolling Stones, Get Off My Cloud, Roy Orbison. I remember all that stuff from back then, right? And that was kind of just the beginning. Ultimately, it was like anybody my age who saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show when it was all over. One fell swoop. Everybody wanted to be in a Beatles band. Stir was created in 1978, and within the first year, started hanging around and very quickly became absorbed into it. And we've been in Fort Collins pretty much ever since. So it's been about 46 years the story has been here, and I've been with it 45 years. The whole thing in terms of stereo started right around the mid-50s and became a big thing going into the 60s, and everybody converted the old monophonic systems they had into stereo. And with the rise of the 60s, you also had the rise of rock and roll, and it just went in 1,500 different directions. When I went to college, there were two status symbols you had. You either had a hot car or you had an amazing hi-fi system. Look at the rise of records in terms of record sales and things like that. It went off the charts. Everybody said when it first started about 15 years ago, oh, this is just going to be a fad. No one's going to waste their time opening up pressing plants again or anything like that. And then the whole thing has exploded. The great thing about analog is the very, very best of the analog recordings versus what I've heard from the very, very best of digital, like some of the DSD recordings. The digital is like looking through a perfect pane of glass out onto some scenery where there's no glare, no smudges, no fingerprints, right? No reflections. You can see right through into every detail out there. And the best of analog is like taking that window away. 86, I had a customer, a CSU professor, and he had uh, you know, a big system at home, and basically he had these two huge bookcases flanking his fireplace in the living room, they were floor to ceiling, stacked with 20th century classical music, and just looking through those, I would start to get the shakes. The adrenaline would start going, I said, my God, he's got records you'd never ever see again, right? About a year later, he buys his first CD player from me, has it for a week, and I get a phone call from him. Love my CD player, I think it's great, best investment I ever did, but he said, I've got, I've got one thing that concerns me greatly though. What's that? He goes, my records. I go, your records? He goes, I gotta get rid of them before they're worth nothing. And with that, a light bulb went on in my head and I thought, oh my God, he can't be the only person thinking like this. I just started doing the search. I basically started going to garage sales, estate sales, put ads in the paper, looking for LPs, jazz, classical, and rock, must be in perfect condition, covers also, and all of a sudden, it turned into an obsession and a mania. And I don't think there was a day between 1986 when I discovered Dr. Dave's collection and out to 92 when I finally had to stop just because I literally had run out of room. Every day was spent looking for records one way or another. As I said, once I got started, it was hard to stop. As a whole, it tops 100,000. There's a room in the back that basically it's all classical and all the classical I have still won't fit into it even though the room is jam packed. The wall to my left over here houses probably another, I would say 25 to 30,000 albums, right? I have yet to go through those. It's undifferentiated mass, sort of random access at this point. I went through some medical issues about five or six years ago, which were kind of on the serious side. You go through a big medical procedure where it tends to get your spirits down, right? And you start to becoming depressed about your mortality. They always advise that you do something nice for yourself, like take a trip to Europe or buy yourself a present, go out and buy a hot sports car. And I spent an enormous fortune on this stereo. I would say at retail, the stereo that's sitting beside me and behind me retails for about $1.3 million. All you people told me to go out and do something nice for myself. And they go, yeah, but isn't that a little insane? I said, no, this stopped me from doing something really stupid like buying a Ferrari or a Maserati. But there's something ineffable about listening to analog that a lot of people would tell you. It just makes it so much better of an immersive experience.